Hi there, so in this tutorial I want to show you how you can get to sci-fi pens like these uh, with just 8 pretty straightforward quick steps and all you have to do is you just select your file for the resolution I choose 4K you can choose 2K if you want or any uh, size you need and then once we have it loaded we bake our maps and I don't have a high poly here if you do you can add that here too but then I don't need the thickness map and I don't have an ID map either so all I do is I add the anti-aliasing uh, samples that just gives a more accurate, better result. And then you can also add the ambient occlusion rays, but I have to say this really slows it down, so I stopped the video there. It actually took quite a while. So, step one is establishing the materials. So you want to start with the foundation and think of what are your panels made of. And I go with a metal here that is covered by paint, so we'll have it um, uh, have some wear and tear and some scratches where the metal comes um, out underneath so but I actually put the metal layer on top because then I put a mask on it and um, so for the paint layer I have a more of a shiny one so I have the roughness lower and then metalness at zero and for the colors um, go with whatever you feel like now step two is adding wear and tear and scratches and for this there are countless options to do this, uh, adding a black mask and procedurals or painting it by hand. Uh, but you also have the options of smart mask and substance, which is obviously super handy because it saves time, so a good starting point. So I go with the gun edges here, where this is of, of course not a gun, but um, I, I like this one for some reason. And after that it's just um, adjusting all the attributes because this won't look good once you apply it the first time so yeah I so suggest to spend some time here and after that I go in and actually add a fill layer so we look for a procedure that's fitting uh, I go with um, a crunch um, paint scratched and then we can put that layer on subtract mode and that way we can add away a bit and break the uniformity so we have some yeah it's not so uniform and it's not so so much and um, that's just one way to to reduce it. Next I add a paint layer to remove some of the mask uh, manually and for that there's a brush I like which is a dirt brush. Uh, there are a couple good ones. I like the dirt brushes the most and then it's just putting in some work. This takes a bit of time so I sped it up here and after that there's just one more layer left which is um, another scratch layer so I just want to have some more scratches and um, this one I put to linear dodge so it get, uh, gets added to the mask and that's really it okay next the dirt layer uh, since people are going to walk on this sci-fi panel there's going to be dirt on it and there are a hundred ways again to add dirt. I don't have the best experience with the dirt generators and mask masks, so what I usually like to do is um, add a fill layer here to a black mask and choose a nice procedural. And they're really cool procedurals, and I find like they mostly look way better. And from there, it's again adjusting the attributes a bit, uh, usually increasing the contrast a bit, so not the whole texture gets darker. Now I'm adding some emission and the emission is not enabled by default so what you need to do is go to the channels and add the emission channel and from there now you can find it. Here I have a fill layer again, I uh, disable everything else and then choose a color. Uh, I'd go with the orange here and then again it's just masking out and for the mask here you can see one more thing if you didn't know if you press 4 on the keyboard you can actually switch modes you can go uh, polygon fill mode or even whole mesh mode or uh, UV shell mode and that can be faster and so once I'm done here uh, in order to see something actually you need to go to the shader settings and increase the emission intensity a bit and then you need to switch over to the display settings and also enable glare and this will give you a really nice cinematic look um, looks pretty cool probably not the best for 
for the viewport, but it's a better representation of what your asset will look like later in some render engine. Okay, step five is adding normal map details and anchor point. So this step, if you don't have the most detailed, sophisticated model, then this can really um, bring your model to life, so to speak. And really, um, Substance has a great library for normal map details. There's quite a bit to choose from. And so you can see, I speed it up here. I take my time and add all kinds of details. And what you would ideally do is place them with some sort of purpose with uh, some sense of design where it makes ex actually sense and here it's pretty random some concept designer looking at this will probably shake their head but uh, for demonstration purposes um, this is all right i think so after that what you want to do is for the anchor point you move your layer with the normal detail to the bottom or uh, the important thing is that it is below for where you reference it so after that you add your anchor point, you can name it if you want, uh, if you have more then it will probably be useful. And then you go into your mask where you want to reference it, here I um, want to add some of the metal scratches. So if you scroll all the way down, we have the micro normal, and then you can switch to anchor points and select it. And then you won't see anything at first because there's actually one more thing you need to do, and that is to switch on the micro normal details so there's a couple of things to switch on and then you should see it and that's pretty handy to know so one thing I added some more different metal type to the to the whole surface just to give it some more interest um, I didn't record it because it's basically just adding another metal layer and painting a mask for it step 6 is adding decals and font so this one is really great to give it just a bit more storytelling and allows you to, to just make it more interesting. Uh, for this one I'm just adding another fill layer and I give it some height so it just shows that there's physically something on top. Uh, and then you can check out the alpha library and you can find some, um, some, some decals that you, that you would like to implement. And I go for these stripes here, um, very universal, not sure what they're really saying, but indicating some signal here. And then, yeah, just press press the left mouse click and add your decals. And some more arrows pointing to the middle, okay. And then now on top you can add a fill, and then where it gets, um, gives, gives it a more, a better look. Then you can choose another procedure and then you put it again to subtract mode. So now you have it sort of scratched off, uh, probably damaged over time, especially with people walking over it all the time. And uh, I switch to the triplanar mode here and then again adjusting the, the attributes, seeing what looks good. Now I add another fillet on top because I want some more, some more scratches on it. This one Again, put it to subtract mode and adjust the attributes one more time. And yeah, is there, I think there's, yeah, so now what I do is actually uh, duplicate it and go for a font. So you have some different fonts here you can choose, then you can type in your own text. You have to uh, type regular or bold and then you can adjust the size, so if you type in something too long it will be cut off. Then you um, simply reduce the size a bit so it fits in, as you see here. And yeah, again it's just rotating it by uh, control left clicking and uh, dragging. And then place it. Here I actually uh, I change the color and then I add the height mode to, to be inset. And then I'm adding just some, some more numbers and stuff. Yeah, you can go crazy with that. And then one more thing, if you add a, fil a filter um, with a sharpen, then you can get a some more crisp. Step 7 is adding color and roughness variation, because at this point it's still a bit bland and uniform. So we add a regular layer, put the mode to pass through, and then if we add a filter with the HSV, 
we can um, play around with the U saturation and lightness values, have some kind of variation to it, what, whatever you like, and then we add a mask. Again, choosing some fitting procedure here, putting it to um, triplanar mode, and then that's it. Um, next, for some more roughness variation, I like to put dust, so the dust does not really to add much to the color, but uh, due to it being uh, having a high roughness value, it will break up the specularity and make make your asset look way better. So, yeah, add a, a dust a procedure here in a black mask. Uh, my fill layer is uh, very, again with a high roughness value and some light color for dust. And then I um, adjust again the attributes and see what looks what has which has a fitting scale for the scene. And then you can check it out if you rotate the light around your object and you can tell how it affects the specularity. So the last step is a very simple one but it can make a big difference which is adding uh, a layer again on pass-through mode and then putting a sharpen filter on top. Uh, that can just bring out much more detail especially because in the render um, a lot of it can be lost so you want to make sure that you capture everything that you put in the work for. So that's it for the small sci-fi panel tutorial. I hope you liked it and learned something new. Uh, if you did, then uh, I appreciate if you leave a like, uh, comment and of course subscribe if you haven't. And I hope you to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.